think that when the proposal came for introducing Sharia law in, in Ontario, it came from one group, one, one, one group. It didn't come as a demand from the Muslim community. Muslims, you know, had no, there had been no large movement in the Muslim community to ask for Sharia law. It came from one organization. But there was such a hysterical uh, representation of that on the media. And I remember headlines, uh, Taliban comes to Ontario, or Taliban, ta Talibanization of Ontario government. It was so alarmist and so over the top that the end result was that many Muslims who had not wanted Sharia law found themselves in a position of having to defend it because it sparked off this hysteria against Muslims against Sharia, and many people who had not, who would never have demanded Sharia law, got into, found themselves in a position where if they were to speak out against it, they were going to play right into this Islamophobia and demonization of Muslims. You know, they wanted to, uh, many people were left with, with no way, either you further the racialization and the stigmatization of this community, or you play into the hands of this small group, which nobody knows what their agenda is, right? And it was such a terrible experience. And I think even we had kind of, you know, feminists. Marian Boyd was a feminist, right? She had looked at the proposal, and she kind of had put, put, put the proposal forward. But it just split the feminist community in a way that no sensible or rational discussion could come, play, come out of that, that, that discussion. So I think that, you know, in, in a way, we need to create spaces within our communities to have those discussions so that we're not caught in this kind of... Rock and a hard place. Right between a rock and a hard place, you know. And for me, the only way to do that is anti-racist politics, anti-racist feminist politics. But in terms of multiculturalism, I think multiculturalism has been a very effective way of silencing uh, anti-racist politics in this country. Multiculturalism has allowed for certain communities, people of color, to be constructed as cultural communities. Their culture is defined in very orientalist and colonial ways, as static, they will always be that, they have always been that. And culture has now become the only space from which people of color can actually have participation in national political life. It's through this discourse of multiculturalism. And what it has done very successfully is it has displaced the anti-racist discourse. You know, I teach and I have young students of color, they come and they're co completely bought into this multiculturalism ideology. They have no language to talk about racism. They know that if they talk about racism, they will get attacked. And multiculturalism is the dominant discourse now through which all of us have to, are forced to articulate our politics. And I think multiculturalism has, in, in that way, it's done a big service, disservice because it has just silenced an anti-racist discourse and anti-racist politics in this country, which has now become defined as an extreme kind of politics. And, and, and meanwhile, the deeply embedded racial inequalities in Canadian society continue to be reproduced. And multiculturalism masks them, it glosses them over, and it has become a, a policy of governing and managing communities of color so that those politics only get articulated in the name of culture. And culture is defined in highly patriarchal terms. And so it has also fostered the emergence of a really reactionary elite in immigrant communities which have used the language and the politics of multiculturalism and the funding of multiculturalism to kind of get a hold on community politics, which is also just as aggressively anti-feminist. And culture has become the, the kind of uh, um, field within which the state has, uh, you know, articulates with this uh, elite leadership in immigrant communities in highly patriarchal ways. And the Canadian state, by allying itself with these groups actually strengthens patriarchal relations in the community because it allows for these groups to articulate their patriarchal uh, interests in the name of culture, in the name of protecting Indian culture or Muslim culture or whatever. And the state, I think, has greatly strengthened patriarchy in immigrant communities through the politics of multiculturalism. So my position on multiculturalism is that multiculturalism exists in a very uneasy tension with bilingualism and biculturalism. So Canada defines itself as either officially multicultural or officially bilingual and bicultural. And by bilingual and bicultural, what is meant is French and English. 
And so we have a kind of policy of white supremacy, which is what bilingualism and biculturalism really is, and multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. And multiculturalism, you know, how do we define what these multicultures are? They're different, diversity. Who are they different from? The multicultures that get defined are different from the English and, and, and French. And so the center of the nation still continues to be defined as English and French. So multiculturalism actually, from my perspective, upholds white supremacy. And you know, I think that I would support a multicultural politics if at the same time we were dismantling white supremacy, which we're not, right? In fact, multiculturalism feeds very nicely into, as I say, the managing of ethnics and, and the colors, right? In a way that still allows the nation to define itself as really bilingual and bicultural. So, you know, I mean, there are lots of people who have that critique of multiculturalism, and I share that.